Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is The Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Sunday Girl, and here's our story. Hello from the UK, Ollie. Firstly, if you're reading this, thank you. I'm shaking as, as I type this email. I want you to share my story so badly, but it makes me feel so physically sick, angry, and confused to write it down and see it in black and white. But I need this. I need this like oxygen. Your channel has helped me, like others, wake up. I cannot be begin to tell you how much you mean to me and how awkward I find it to admit that trusting and believing people or anything is extremely difficult concept to handle right now. Yet, I feel as though you're my therapist, life coach, or mentor. Even though we never met, but I digress. I don't know how long this will be, and I truly hope you don't find it too wordy. I'm a bit of a word geek and enjoy writing. It's my only escape. I thought it best to stick to fake names for the purpose of sharing my story and exposing my narcissistic family tree and ex-father of my child. When watching you read your when watching you read your own and other people's stories, I think it adds much needed gallows humor. So here it goes. While watching one of your videos yesterday, I got a flashback an exact quote another narc parent had made saying they needed more children because we messed you up, messed you and your brother up when i was 14 top cunt said this i remember being excited at the thought of having a baby around until the mothership told me it was only top cunt who wanted more kids and it was only to shirk the responsibility of focusing his attentions on messing you and your brother up and what he's done to all of us this was conveniently after his latest discovered sexual indiscretion with mothership's older alcoholic narc sister aunt pistine on on a sofa one sunday evening it was in the family home while the mothership was in the bed was in bed meditating as usual and me and golden balls were in our separate rooms upstairs my mother had always used me and brother to try and control top cunt all her life i think that top cunt wanted some control back because the mothership was just establishing her own business scam from home as a spiritualist medium and she was making her own money for the first time since her teenage years Top cunt being pissed off about it was just a bonus for the mothership. She was getting so much supply through the people she was helping on a constant basis. Now she felt, now she felt that she had the power, the power play to refuse to do as top cunt was requesting by giving her career at forty to to have by giving up her career at 40 to have a newborn baby again and revert back to being isolated and lonely <clears throat> mothership had chosen to believe top cunt over anti pistine and just disowned her sister and carried on but even though he was forgiven to some degree it wasn't enough he knew the mothership had her own money now and a method of making it trying to make her pregnant at 40 was ridiculous considering mothership's mental health and our always seem, seemingly shitty financial situation. Top Con punished her by starting an emotional affair with his older brother's 24-year-old girlfriend, which later turned physical. Mothership was so consumed with spiritual success and power, she didn't even notice Top Cunt was never home. I discovered his text to his side piece. I was 16. To add, I wasn't snooping. Top Cunt didn't allow me mobile phones because they would give you brain cancer and fry your brain slowly like a microwave. So even if I ever wanted to contact anyone, it'd have to be on Top Cunt's phone, which he would allow some, which he would sometimes allow. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure. And that way you had access to all your girlfriend's numbers. Didn't he? If you're texting and calling all your girlfriends on his phone, then he could probably do the same. I wonder if that's in the story anywhere. He had fallen asleep drunk in his hideout, the kitchen dining room, which is the only room he uses, awake other than the toilet. 
He also sits when he's too drunk or tired to stand. So he was asleep, slouched half on a chair, the other... So, wait. So he was asleep, slouched half on a chair, the other on the, other on the floor, and I decided against waking him up for permission and saw his phone next to him. This was the Millennium, so it wasn't a smartphone. It was a simple Nokia 3210 with a keypad and a tiny screen with a very small internal memory. The phone was open on flirty message from timber, men, from timber merchants. Admittedly, I, haven't, I hadn't ever met anyone who loves wood and joinery as much as Top Cunt. But sexing a wood manufacturer's was, was too fetish. I knew it was an alias and I knew Top Cunt was messing around again, but I was petrified of doing anything about it at first because he scared me so much. I did tell the mothership because she groomed me from birth that Top Cunt was a drinking, philandering meathead who controlled her. I wanted her to leave Top Cunt. I thought if he left, she'd finally be happy and stop being the way she was. Mm, no, she probably she's hiding behind him. <clears throat> Telling the mothership only furthered my abuse and alien alienated and alienation naturally. The mothership made me her secret spy. She got disguises for me and had me following Top Cunt and surveying him sometimes for days. She wouldn't confront him, just wanted proof, physical proof. I don't know what she expected me to do at 16, but I felt I was doing what was right for my poorly abused parent. When she eventually did confront Top Cunt, she used me to fight for her, standing behind me. Top Cunt was going to get violent when I threatened him. I told him he was no longer welcome at the house and called him a cunt. This was the worst possible thing I could do, so I did it. Top Cunt was blindsided as he left and didn't speak to me for months. Both the mothership and Top Cunt have different realities, and because they have distorted my reality for so long, I feel I need to get it all out on paper to try to unravel the horrible ball of wire wool in my head. Even though Top Cunt is the overt narcissist in the house, the mothership was a lot more proactive and dedicated to infecting with her own perception side. I told you. The one you think is the enabler or the abuser is usually the, the abused is usually the one pulling the strings. The mothership and Top Cunt meant when she was met when she was 19 and he was 18 and they were still living at home with their narc parents. Top Cunt was working as an apprentice carpenter and the mothership worked days at a market stall and an extra job at a bar at night. Top Cunt liked to drink, fight, and fuck. He was very alpha, social, and sexually promiscuous. He had lost his virginity at 13 and on and went on to have numerous conquests, extramarital, naturally. Why do you know this as her daughter? As the daughter, why are you... The fact that you know when your father lost his virginity, I mean, that's just... That's that's crazy. I mean, my parents are fucked up sexually, but I don't even know that. I don't even have to know that detail, thank God. Maybe because they just didn't think of it. Think to tell me. Who knows? The mothership is socially awkward, waif, covert narcissist. The mothership's other sexual partners include only spirits, aliens, and demons. Top cunt is the only human male she has had intercourse with, with which of, of course, I have told, I have been told in detail from as long as I can remember. Well, I mean, did the did, did the aliens just like fucking leave? Like what happened? They kick her out of the spaceship afterward? Like what happened? Like what an asshole aliens are. She probably told all her friends. Don't date aliens. They only want one thing. Your butthole. Maybe my mother's an alien. Subject for another video. 
The mother still insists on cheating. Sometimes I wonder if that makes her think I wouldn't think her so weak to let her husband fuck around their entire relationship. The only other physical or dating experience she had with a night was with a 19 year old for a few dates when she was 16. Apparently he died tragically in a motorcycle accident shortly afterwards, but she spoke about him all the time when I was a child. She used to say he visited her when she was sad about Top Gun and helped give her spiritual massage messages from the other side. I bet he delivered that spiritual dick. You know, she's carrying on relationships with spirits, demons. Wow, this is nutty. The whole spiritual abuse came from the mothership requires its own message because it's so extensive and insidious. Yeah, it is. But for now, Top Cunt was raised Roman Catholic by two religious narcs with seven brothers in a three-bedroom house. The mothership was raised in an, ambigu in an ambiguous religion by a malignant narc mother and an enabling slave husband with two narc sisters who managed to both hold golden child status due to a 14-year age gap between the youngest and the mothership, who was the black sheep. The mothership didn't speak to either of her sisters, and both her parents are dead. She loved her father but hated her own mother, who she says abused and neglected her, yet treated her sisters like princesses. It was the typical Cinderella story. During their childhoods, both the mothership and Top Gun claimed to have been abused mentally, physically, and verbally. The mothership says she was abused sexually by people outside the family once at six, once at, six at school and another time many attempt, attempted assault or sexual harassment throughout, throughout her younger years. Top cunt would never have admitted to sexual abuse, even if it occurred in his childhood, and speaks nothing but glowing praise for his extreme religi religious and strict father and mother, if anything uses his abuse as a measuring stick to how soft he is on me. There were only six dating, there were only six, wait, they were only dating for six weeks when Top cunt was arrested and charged with fighting in a pub but it was mistaken identity, apparently. He got a few years out in 18 months. He was moved around a lot, but never talks about his time inside, only retells two stories. He was jumped in a shower by a large group and fought them off, wet and slippery and naked, the most vulnerable you can be, but I had him. I tried to ask if he was, assault if he was very assaulted once, and he responded very aggressively, claiming no, no man would get near my asshole. After his shower brawl, he cleverly befriended, befriended a retarded, thick meathead who had the mentality of a child with comic books and candy to be his personal bodyguard. He never got into any more trouble. <clears throat> I never questioned how it seemed so strange. Only two things happened during nearly two years of constant prison time, but he wouldn't answer anyway. Top Cunt talks in sayings, quotes, and life mottos. That's it. No substance. He has a selection of stories I call the joke jukebox that just circulate over and over. They're all long, they're all pointless, and they're all, and they're all either to illustrate how amazing and right he is all the time or how funny and popular he is. He has the biggest ego of anyone and I have ever met and people think he's dry or playing or playing arrogance for for the laugh but it's all deadly serious and only his immediate family knows this. Top Cunt's favorite phrases are do as I say not as I do even when I'm wrong I'm right. I've heard that one. At the end of the day I'm your father I what I say goes I don't want to hear it. You're doing that wrong, do it my way, it's the right way. In response to asking for any affection, what do you want? You must want something. You're creeping around me. I, I'm a self-made businessman. I'm a master carpenter, athlete, and soul singer. They say there's only nine ways to kill a cat. I know 12, and so on. You get the point. Mothership likes to harp on that. He's really deep, 
and soft on the inside. But there's nothing but anger, control, hate, pain, bitterness, rage, envy, and she knows it. Top Cunt is a functioning alcoholic with a painkiller dependence who says he would rather die than stop drinking, and it's never an option ever. No matter what, full stop, now fuck off. The only thing deep is a bottle he's dr the only thing deep is the bottle he's drinking from. <clears throat> now I'm 29 and the mothership and Top Cunt are still together. Still hating one another, sleeping in separate rooms, and still triangulating their broken adult children while I've managed to escape somewhat. I do need to get out of this house. I rent and I rent and stat. Golden Balls at 32 is still living at home, dependent on alcohol, prescription drugs, and weed, which both my parents supply him with. He never leaves He never leaves his house unless Wait, he never leaves the house unless it's a medical appointment, either counseling because he's so ill and tortured, or medical appointments to ensure he has his medita medication and stays on disability benefits. I don't know what you call this in the USA. Yeah, it's called being a deadbeat. Basically, there's a lot of it. There's disability claims here. There's plenty of deadbeats on disability here. If you watch my political videos, I, I bring them up. His disability is his diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome that he got in his mid-twenties, but that's for another story. I rent my first child on home off Top Cunt with my two-year-old daughter from my most recent emotionally, verbally, financially, sexually abusive relationship of three and a half years. I only woke up to my relationship with the narc after after posting on a forum, Mumsnet, asking for advice on my situation with my partner and his abusive family. Some kind woman directed me to a book I highly recommend called Why Does He Do That? Into the Minds of Angry and Controlling Men by Lundy Bancroft. While it didn't help me learn about narcissistic abuse and the reason for me ending up in this situation, it didn't give me the validation and fear to leave. I managed to... Oh, it did give me the, it did give me the, the give me the validation and fear to leave. I managed to escape to a woman's refuge on the second of April, twenty sixteen. Now a day forever etched in my mind. My daughter was nine months old, and all I had was her dismantled cot and mattress and a few bin bags of clothes and some toys. I previous, previously left Mad Mac twice just before I found out I was pregnant and then when my daughter was six months old. But the abuse incurred at home from my family, where I sought refuge, always drove me back to Mad Mac during, during his hoovering and love bomb, bombing upturn. It's been the worst 18 months of my life since then, and that was after I left the relationship. It's true when they say that's when the real battle starts. Top Cun is still trying to encourage me to start start the relationship. Despite the severe effects it despite the severe effects it was and is still having on me and all my daughters, contract contact starts and ends up Yep, you guessed it, their house. Five months ago I was actively suicidal. I had a complete mental collapse and I was so desperate to die, but I didn't know why. I felt so much hate, confusion, and fear, I just wanted it all to stop. The intensity of my impulse to die scared me to my, my GP's office for an increase in my antidepressants. I refused, but instead pushed into a self-referral for CBT. I had been through this process twice before. CBT didn't work for me and the waiting lists were six months plus. I left the appointment feeling defeated, but put through my application regardless. I knew killing myself wasn't an option at 21. I was a single parent who needed to get better and well for her daughter. Within a few days, I had a phone call from a very concerned woman. She, 
She said she was from the self-referral team and she had read through my application and they wouldn't be able to help me but had referred me to the crisis team. For example, me mental health assessment. I was astounded, my heart shot through the floor and I felt myself starting the slide, starting to associate like so many other, other times before. I knew I had to call you because you really do need help. That much is obvious. I felt a wave of validation, but I still couldn't respond to this female voice. Have you heard of the sugar refinery for personality disorders? I think that would be helpful. I will send you some correspondence and a letter discharging you from our services stating why we feel we can't treat you. Finally, words forming in my head and making sentences before I could say anything she was saying goodbye. I dropped to the floor and had a panic attack. I thought I was going to die. My daughter was in the living room in her high chair eating toast. I could hear her chattering away, but I couldn't get off the floor. I was petrified. I was frozen. My muscles had seized up. I was shaking rapidly on the floor. I didn't know if I was having a fit or if my muscles were just in spasm from the adrenaline. My phone was still in my hand, locked when I saw Angel was calling. I picked up using my chin because my other arm was locked under me, helping to control my legs from kicking, keeping myself in a ball. <clears throat> what are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? The mothership was laughing along to my tears. I don't know what noises I was making, but I can assure you it didn't sound like joy or laughter. More breathless deep sobs and some groans and guttural pain. I couldn't speak back, so I just listened to her asking me to speak over and over until I hung up the phone. Forty minutes later, she walked through the door and found me on the living room floor sobbing silently while my daughter was playing with her toys. <clears throat> oh, love, what's the matter? Her voice was full of patronizing, feigned care, and it just made me cry more now audibly. She tried to hug me, but I pushed her away, something I've always done since a young child. Don't push me away. Give me a cuddle. Let me make you feel better. She made me feel sick. Can you and Dad have Penny tonight? I'm really scared. Scared of what, love? Anyway, emphasis on the love. Always emphasis on the love. I didn't understand what she found so hard to understand. She knew I had left an abusive relationship and was continually terrorized by Mac Dad and his narc family. I had re relapsed with my depression, self harm, my eating disorder, I, and I couldn't fit into clothes for it. And I could fit into a clothes for a ten year old. I looked like a corpse, not a young mother. How did she not know that I was just asking for some time because I didn't want my daughter to see me like this? After a two-hour stay where she talked about herself and even told me she needed me to help her with some things when she was feeling better, she finally left with my daughter giving me a small window of reflection time where I could watch YouTube videos about abuse recovery, write it in my journal, and try, to, try best to heal myself. The next morning, the post came and a letter from the self-referral CBT agency had sent the letter and information as they said they would. I couldn't believe how quick it came. I didn't want to read the letter at first. I knew it would make me vomit. Thinking about how it would, would make me vomit made me vomit three times before I could open the letter. Stood heaving over my kitchen sink. Possible borderline personality disorder. There it was in black and white. And even though the months that followed led led to my formal diagnosis and referral to DBT was, wasn't was enough. I went through the stages of grief when I discovered BPD. It was like finding myself but not liking what I found. I knew I could recover from symptoms. I knew there was hope now and a name and a community of people like me. I had options for the first time in my life and I expected my family to be elated. All these years of them thinking I was just a bad kid, slutty sexual deviant, drug addict, or wild beast, off the rails, good for nothing. I was emotionally dysregulated, but they refused it. 
Nothing wrong with you. You've always been hard to control, but you're our daughter and we love you. We just don't tell anyone. You will never get a job. People will judge. <clears throat> I even called Mad Mac to apologize for any part in our relationship problems. I became convinced that I was crazy like everyone always said I was and life would be hard and I couldn't have more kids or get married, but I could help other people like me and I could be the best mother to my daughter as possible by making sure I didn't mess up. Mad Mac loved it, of course, saying he always knew I was a crazy bitch, but he loved me anyway. He started rehashing old arguments or events of abuse and reframing it around my, um, around my BPD. I mean, I hope you realize how bad BPD is. I had some suspicions as I was reading this. He told me that this was the proof my parents fucked me up and it was dangerous for me and our daughter to stay here in contact any longer because I'll end up dead or in a mental hospital. I believed him, but I knew it wasn't an option of return. He kept offering to come down and look after me, take time off work, something he refused to do when I was recovering from a cesarean or when I developed postnatal depression, so I declined in terms of me being nursed back to sanity and instead ask he take the time off to see his daughter only who only who he only sees once a month he was extremely angry and resentful saying it was just because i wanted to go out and get dicked that i wanted to go get drunk and spread my legs this was in the same conversation of revealing my bpd we had been apart for 14 months so i understand his I didn't understand his reasoning. I knew he was scared to leave. I, I, he knew I was scared to leave the house. I covered. I was covered in fresh, self-inflicted scars, and all my bones were showing. I couldn't be tarting myself up to go out to meet a man looking like a crack whore. It didn't make sense. Besides, I told him it wasn't his business who I was fucking, and that was beside the point. He told this as validation. That was my intention and didn't get further mention my mental health, but went AWOL for weeks, no contact. At this point, a, an old crush from my teens and early 20s got back in contact with me. He had just left his wife of 12 months living back. See, I got to call you out here. I got to call you out here. Like, these people are coming back into your life. I think you're bringing them back in deliberately. This is your BPD taking over. And, like, even though you said at the beginning, I hope this isn't too wordy, you knew you were going to be too wordy. Because you're writing this like a novel, not like a story. That's the problem here. You still haven't gotten down to your brass tacks of who you are because you're still writing this as if you're writing a novel. You're fluffing it up, you're overusing words, you're you're over explaining this is like a this is like you're trying to write a novel instead of telling a story. You're still performing. You're still performing. Everything is explained in the most drastic of terms. It's another novel. And this is the problem with, border, with borderlines is borderlines are always performing. You have to stop performing if you're going, if you really want to get ahead of this, because what you have is so dangerous and so toxic. You got to stop the bullshit. You got to go full stop and stop the bullshit. Anybody who's been in your life in the past, anybody. Now, your daughter's father, you got to keep around. He has a right to be in there. But the rest of them got to go. Old acquaintances running in, rolling in, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It's never going to work. He had just left his wife of 12 months and was living back home with his dad. 
around the corner from my family's first house where where I was now renting. He asked if we could meet for a coffee and he came over two days later. Dressed smart, confident, and smiling. He started trying to charm and seduce me almost immediately and I felt uncomfortable by his stares, even though I had always found them attractive. Something seemed off. Within an hour, he told me he was in AA, had hit rock bottom after attempting suicide by jumping off a cliff, surviving to explain to his wife why he did it. He got help, claimed sobriety, but some months later, debt uncovered, thefts uncovered, and secret drinking. He says he left, but I hope he, she kicked his ass out. They were married 12 months, and he says he never loved her like that but he didn't know what else to do. She had health problems and he felt sorry for her. Right, you just keep bringing in the same type of abusive, drug-riddled assholes as your father. You keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. He was smug about the wedding saying it was a really good day and it didn't matter because he didn't pay for it or family did and they were rich anyway. I knew I didn't want a relationship with someone capable of that, considering that they were 10 years together and six years cohabitating before they even married. This woman believed this man to be the love of her life. I considered him slightly sociopathic at the time. He did manage to convince me he deserved happiness too, and that's why he left. He was getting clean. He went on to say his alcoholic, abusive mother was dying of cancer and he didn't care because she was still drinking, etc. I felt so sorry for him and the pain he was going through, battling feelings of hate and guilt towards an alcoholic parent. I knew it too well. The conversation took a turn when he, when he started reminiscing about our past. Everything was how obsessed, crazy, and hot he was for me. He had a monologue of sleaze that rolled off his tongue. It was so amazing. It, I was so funny. I was so sexy. He had been with, in love with me from 16 plus, but too scared to make a move because I, was always, because I always had a boyfriend. It was so calculating in, this, in the space of a few coffees. He was trying to love bomb me after no contact for 10 years. I just didn't understand why the need for manipulation. What's wrong for, with people? Because he's another borderline. That's what they do. They never stop performing. Luckily, I escaped this narcissist, this narc's clutches, and didn't get swept in by his love bombing to the extent I would have four months previous. I knew I was vulnerable. That is, that is blood in the water for narcs. This was further proof something around me was happening and seeing it all play out with a fresh perspective alongside a court case in 2017 regarding my daughter that has forced me to take action and go no contact with my family. The mothership and top cunt refused to support me with their blessing or offer support at all for that matter, even refused to give me a lift to the courthouse or legal advice. In fact, they actively tried to stop me and sabotage it. The mothership even told her psychiatrist, I said I wanted to kill my daughter and myself, lies of course which were denied, but I was taking Mad Mac to solidify contact so we couldn't keep trying to control me and our daughter, not to take access away but to promote it. I was still being dramatic, causing trouble and looking for a fight, looking for a fight because I wanted my daughter to have her father because all my life all I wanted was a loving mother and father. Then the penny finally dropped as hard as it could. It cut me like a fire. These people just do not don't just these people don't just not like me as they would intermediately say all my life, but they hated me. They loved me as long as I continued to play along with their obvious attempts at control and abuse. And I would never truly recover from my abuse because it wasn't just Mad Max abuse that was making me want to die, but it started much, much younger than that. <coughs> like my suicide attempt at 10 when the mothership didn't take me to the hospital, but berated me instead and forced their fingers in my throat and agreed with golden balls to hide it all from Top Cunt 
because he would be furious with me. That's when I knew I was nothing, worthless. I didn't really live in reality after that until I started running away or getting chucked out in my teen years. It was then that parents of families would tell me my parents were wrong and sick. I didn't know who to believe anymore. I just wanted to be able to do what I wanted and who I wanted to be and be who I wanted to be. I just wanted to be left alone for most of a year's most of a year's time despite having the feeling of loneliness i used to write plays and songs and rap lyrics i'd perform in front of my mirror and dream of being a singer and an actress it was all i ever wanted and all i could ever be i was told all the time i was too fat plain looking tone deaf clumsy uncoordinated awkward looking my legs were too fat so was my bum i had an awkward shape and goofy teeth and bushy eyebrows apparently I needed plastic surgery, I was told by the mothership when I was 9 or 10. She was very serious about this. She said I didn't understand why she was so small, petite, olive skin, blonde with big dark blue eyes, and I was so large and dark and pale skin with gray green eyes. I was devastated. The mothership was beautiful by my definition, so I couldn't be. I was always blamed on top cunt. It was always blamed on top cunt. You get that from him. That must be his side. She's always called me she's always called me by top cunt surname. You are you really are a cunt or you're a cunt's a little cunt sometimes. It was awful because the mothership hated Top Cunt. She told me every day and Top Cunt didn't like me and was annoyed by me. I was too loud and opinionated and he told me that too. She said you can you can love someone and hate them at the same time. It didn't feel fair. The mothership never liked golden balls. In fact, she worshipped him. It was exactly like her temperament looks and spiritual gifts. I was apparently just like Top Cunt, angry, controlling, wild, and violent. The mothership and golden balls punished me as Top Cunt's replacement. They were best friends with a secret relationship, more like husband and wife, but it was just the alcoholic adulterer spawn. Even Ann Pistine said when I was born, yuck, she looks like him. During my recent treatment for suicidal ideation, and coming to terms with my diagnosis, a support worker suggested I get my hair cut. It was very, very long and added it would get get me out and make me feel more human. I agreed as I was total as I was a total hermit at this point and had been for weeks. I booked my appointment at a local salon with AJ, my hairdresser. He was in an unhappy relationship who I knew was a narc but didn't comment on his relationship because they have a four-year-old daughter. We listened to each other gripe about liars and bad parents. He was no contact with his mother who said he was a vile person. I heard about his mother and she is a vile person. He had just found out about his dad, his mother's second husband, who had walked out on him and his two brothers to her first husband and she, and he wasn't and he wasn't and he was five when he was five wasn't actually his dad at all but but a man who has been snared by a very malignant dangerous narc woman aj couldn't find his find out who his real dad was all he told was lies and sent on wild goose chases after over a year he found a lead on a man she had an affair with around the time she was conceived the man had died just a few years earlier having to leave behind his own family one of the daughters agreed to provide dna but the results were inconclusive aj said that despite all the lies over the years that was the most unforgivable forgivable she denied me my father i could never do that to a child I left the hairdressers feeling sad about how life can make happy, confident people broken slaves to spoiled narcissists. AJ left his narc girlfriend and moved back in with his narc mother. He had no he had nowhere else to go at the time and started spending more time at work and the gym to stay away. When he had his daughter, he would take her out for trips so she only had to sleep at her grandmother's rather than be sub subjected to her narc behavior all day. He said he left one bad influence and didn't want to be impressing another on his daughter. 
maybe me and AJ were falling in love and I knew how I could trust my instincts after time. All this hurt after all this abuse. You need to stop seeking out people who've been abused. No, it's only going to end bad again. And by over-explaining it and getting involved in his entire story is not good for you. You need to get away from all of this. You are trapped in a cycle of always performing and then putting and then trying to write a novel about it. This isn't a fairy tale. This isn't supposed to be written out to be a, to be a best-selling novel. Get rid of him, the mothership said. You have to think of your daughter now. Put your daughter first. It's not about you. My daughter had only met AJ in the context of being my hairdresser and having a few play dates with his daughter. She didn't see him naked. She wasn't exposed to anything sinister. I don't understand why the mothership and Tak Khan refused to meet him and have a meal with him as his treat. The mothership said it was Top Cunt that was refusing down, loyal, down to loyalty to Mad Mac. I told the mothership I was upset because I was, I was his daughter. She said, you know, what he's, you know what he's like. He really likes Mad Mac. He wants you two together again. Accepting this new fancy boy will make it harder on Mad Mac and our relationship with him and, and get you back. What together? I thought again I didn't understand. Did my parents not know about the abuse? Did they not see evidence and hear the recordings? I lived in a refuge off canned goods and donations for eight weeks before they finally had the time to come get me and my daughter away from the same town as my abuser, even though I was only an hour and a half drive. Mad Mac had stripped me of all finances, unbeknownst to me and carefully and in, insured at the time of registering our daughter for the national child benefit received by all to be him as the legal guardian of our daughter in terms of security control any and all benefits she was entitled to or me through extension he had finally abused me for three and a half years and now was determined to starve me back starve me and and his baby back into his lair I didn't know how long I could take the abuse and the gaslighting was intense isolation in that woman's refuge. I was petrified to go out in case he saw me and knew where I was staying. Mad Mac was still having access with our daughter, but he didn't want to see her without me there unless he could have his own narc mother around to help him. Three months into my relationship with AJ, which has been... Us both learning about narcissistic abuse, recovering and being better people and better parents, and the mothership becomes desperate for me to break up with them, almost frantic. I told the mothership to fuck off out of my house, and I didn't give a flying fuck what she or Top Gun thought about me when she told me I was forbidden to live with, him, with AJ or marry him, and of I defied they would leave Wait, I told the mothership to fuck off out of my house and I didn't give a flying fuck what she or Top Cunt thought of me when she told me I was forbidden to live with AJ or marry him and or if I defied this, they wouldn't leave me my inheritance. You're not getting it anyway. Don't you think you're marrying him because you're not and this is our house? Oh, wait, don't think you're marrying him because you're not, and this is our house. After she stormed out in narc rage, I wrote down that, so far, this 29-year-old, I've been told, I'm not allowed a part-time job because Top Cunt wants me to train an advanced technical artist to work for him and his business, even though I have zero passion or expertise for this area. I am not allowed to buy the guilt gift car off them. That is from when Top Cun slept with Aunt Pistine because they're keeping it for golden balls even though he doesn't drive and wouldn't and would cost me to fix it up. Anyway, I'm not allowed a boyfriend because I will upset my abusive ex which will affect my daughter. I wasn't allowed to decorate my own house before I moved in and I was re reviled for decorating it 
myself a year later. The mothership didn't even watch my daughter for me so I could go to the gym for a few hours over the summer before nursery started because I was too thin and becoming an addiction. The problem is you keep letting these people into your life and then are surprised by how they're re replying. And you're feeding into it with your borderline with the drama. Look, I don't think this guy, I think personally, I think it sounds like this guy AJ is love bombing you too. It's the same thing over and over and over again. Now, I don't think your parents should be telling you what to do at 29, but you got a lot of problems. Okay, that you are trying to sweep under the rug with another relationship. Even though this is, even though I was told numerous medical prophet told by by numerous medical professionals that exercise is the best thing for me right now, and it has been. Admittedly, being rated too thin is so refreshing and makes it, and makes a change from me being too fat all my life. I believe the switch is down to the mothership middle age spread that she cannot shift for love nor money. Top con tells her all the time. Reminds her of jibs, of reminds her of jibes sometimes, subtly, other times not so. Guess that Tommy Tuck wasn't worth the money, eh? But that facelift and holiday were were that the mothership required to forgive Top Cunt for the affair with the 24-year-old. Top Cunt doesn't even attempt to have sex with the mothership anymore. I know this because I have always intimately known the mothership's love life. I would also be able to sketch her vagina to life like realness. I have seen her dried up box, bush box more times than my own, but I digress. They can keep their money. I never wanted money or possessions in the first place. That is why they could never control me like golden balls. That's why he's at home a virgin with no life, abused to his core in a horrible infantilization way. And here I am completely and totally wide awake because I was the scapegoat and dared to stand up for myself. It was worth every slap I might add and I would relish them even attempting to slap me around now because I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. Gym three times a week and been practicing my left and right jabs. Since my waking up and setting boundaries, the mothership and Tong Top Con have gone full nuts. Full Death Con 5. They have been attempting to reset reality every few days. I confronted them both about the abuse, denied, blame shifted, projected, gaslighted, and did the usual circular arguments. They also tried to threaten me again with no money and heavy triangulating me. And Golden Balls, who was up between ages who was up between the ages of nineteen and recently I have been very close to in regards to the abuse. But now he refuses to speak to me, even though I was only sending him links to video to your videos a few weeks ago. Now I know he's ruined. He's a full covert narc himself who hates everyone and everything. He says he sees other people as instincts, but then switches to the biggest victim in the world. He's highly intelligent and I believe manipulating me and hating me my whole life. Also, I apparently said he sexually abused me as a child to the mothership, which is his excuse for not wanting to talk to me. This was a clever move by her twistedness, as I did, as I did ask the mothership if any, er, if I ever told her I was sexually abused, or as a child if I was, because I had a lot of repressed memories that I was working through with counseling. Her answer was, I don't know, I don't think so, which was extremely troubling. She repackaged it and sent it out through some extra saltiness. Even though Golden Balls has a 2.1 degree in human biology and biochemistry, he's been so twisted by the mothership and her grooming him from birth saying that they are all soulmates, twin flames from previous lives. He said that she is the center of his world. He knows... He's obsessed with her all his years of therapy. The mothership told me she thinks he might kill her someday, and I think there's a chance he might. I think this even more now, I've removed myself from the target. Yeah, because they're all borderline, so they're all dangerous. Top Cun has been calling me and saying he loves me and, my, and the mothership is unwell. 
she that the psychosis she is diagnosed due to her spiritual delusions i should just forget the past when i refused to say he at least wanted me to see and explain the truth that he never cheat or leave the mothership the mothership, I told him I didn't give two shakes of a donkey's dick if he was seeing horrors when he was supposed to be working. That I hope that he did leave her, or failing that, I hope she bleeds him dry. After that, he told Golden Balls he was on mind-altering drugs that gave him false memories. I haven't seen any of them since. I haven't been sleeping, and I uh, feel the, almost bereft like they've died is this normal is it important to grieve or or will that remove the need and anger to stay no contact i guess your opinion on any commentary on any of how to move forward or tips would be appreciated so i suppose just sharing and unloading the burden will be healing will be something towards healing thank you so much ollie sunday girl well The first thing is, you have to realize you're a borderline and they're all borderlines. So it makes everybody dangerous. Okay, and my fear is, is that you're performing still in this letter. This letter is a novel. This letter is a performance. Okay, getting a diagnosis of BPD and then going around and, and waving it around as an excuse for your behavior doesn't wash. It doesn't wash on this channel. I'll tell you that. It doesn't wash because every decision you made, you knew you were making it. You were just as calculated as your parents were. Now you learned it from them. You're trying to break the cycle. If you're truly trying to break the cycle, you have to re realize this BPD shit is toxic. You have to stop performing when you tell this story. You have to just give the facts of what happened and not write it out as you're writing a novel because people are going to take it as you're performing. This thing with AJ and your parents telling you what to do, they're wrong, but you're getting involved with another borderline. I'm telling you, just by it's another borderline that's going to end just as poorly. Because you haven't tackled this yourself. You have to learn to live with yourself before you can live with other people. And you haven't learned to do that yet. You have to get away from all of these people and keep them away. Your grief isn't grief, your grief is anger. Because you're a borderline you need revenge and that's going to keep coming up and screwing with you it's not grief it's anger and revenge you're seeking and you're going to have to move past that and have to understand that these feelings of anger are not going away you can only learn to deal with them by understanding where you were broken now, you were obviously broken a long time ago Okay? But BPD is not an excuse for your behavior. It's not. Okay? I've been consistent when I talk about borderline personality disorder. When you're doing your tactics, you know you're doing them. You're making a choice to do them because you're trying to get your way on something. Your whole family are borderlines. All of them. It's not just you. It's all of them. They made you the borderline. They're making the cho choices as well. You don't like it. You want it to change. You have to give it up. You have to give them all up. You have to walk away and you have to stop. And you have to start figuring out who you are for real and stop going through life conducting a performance. So... I hope that helps, and I hope you understand where I'm coming from on this. Okay? Thank you for your contribution and your story. I appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching, if you're still watching after 54 minutes. 
Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, a Facebook chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or you'd just like to make a contribution to the channel in general to help it succeed and grow, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you, this all goes away. So if you wanna see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been the Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.